I'm gonna I'm go not ahead and pop off, guys. Alright. Okay. Okay. Take care, Ellie. See you, Ellie. Ellie. Maybe R will be with you. Yeah, God damn good. it! <laughs> did you just say Arlo? Yes. yes. Of course you did. Take a shot every time somebody says Arlo. You're not. Not really. Do not. Oh, really. Well, uh. <laughs> that is until well, Ellie came off. So, E. Um, I. I she li he lives in spirit. Yeah. Um, I love that the total yeah. amount is still 369. It's like nobody yeah. wants to lose that number, so they're not donating. There are three people okay. having an orgy. That's, that's like three couples are having a 69 orgy, is how I interpret that. Here's but the I'm Tish. <laughs> the only solution is to donate by hundreds at a time so that we keep the 69. <laughs> So then it becomes, it goes from triple nice to quadruple nice. Yeah. From quadruple nice. <laughs> to quadruple, triple, triple nice. Double, 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 double. That's how it fucking goes, you idiot. <laughs> Get your fucking gremlin math out of here. <laughs> What's going on in the Discord yeah. call? Um. <laughs> oh yeah, Border, the... Another one too. You probably heard of this one, King Solomon. I own like three what? copies of his grimoire, literally three. Come on, Discord. Well, okay, three copies of the lesser key. I know there's the greater key and the general book, but let's be real. If you're an occult, if you are an occultist, you can have all three. A lot of Western magi do, but naturally speaking, you probably only have the lesser key because the lesser key is the fun one. Discord. Wasn't there, wasn't there like a new tale of Gilgamesh that was found recently or something? Yeah, it was, it, it was. It was held in of all fucking places, Hobby Lobby. Of course it was. Of course. It fucking... <laughs> Apparently. Okay. So. Wasn't in the wasn't in the fucking Library of Alexandria, which was burned. It was in a fucking Hobby Lobby of all places. <laughs> yeah. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, and um, another fun thing, fun thing about Honestly, the two I'd, artifacts. I'd be uh, less shocked if it was in a Home Depot because the fucking <laughs> Home Depot is already a mystical labyrinth. Well, I used to work there. Um, <laughs> not wrong. Well, there was another one too where um, you see the ancient Catholics did as ancient Catholics do, and if they disagreed with you instead of a debate, they would just go right to the genocide part. So, uh, they tried to eliminate, well, funny enough, we just talked about Gnosticism, it's just, in 1945, a random-ass farmer in Egypt goes into a cave near the city of Nag Hammadi, finds a clay pot, and inside it is a manuscript, and it is, from what we know, the last known copy of the Gnostic scripture that wasn't burned by the Catholics. Damn. Uh, and it survived in an urn for 2,000 years. Hmm. See... This is why in Legend of Zelda you break every pot in sight. Because you never know what kind of shit's hiding in there. Can I just say though, could, good could on those five rupees could be a hundred. Who knows? Yeah. Could be bombs. Go ahead, there. Um, but yeah, of all the places for an ancient manuscript to get lost, thank God it was Egypt, where it's like dry and sandy all the fucking time. Yeah, there, there's there's not gonna be any rain that fucking ruins that. <laughs> Well, it was in a cave, but, like, there's not any, like, humidity, most importantly, to make the pages for papyrus rot. Ah, uh, yeah, that's fair. Hey, remember the time we found an obelisk, uh, a coffin in the middle of the Egyptian desert, and, like, everyone, including Neil Gaiman, was just like, I know what, I know what this story starts with. <laughs> and I also <laughs> know how it is. <clears throat> Yeah, I, I did look up because my curiosity got the hold of me, like, what was in it, and apparently it was, like, three bodies buried in an obsidian casket. That's not foreboding at all. <sighs> no, I will admit, when I was young, uh, I had a huge, like, like, the first history boner I ever really had was for Egypt. Because we played this DOS game called Riddle of the Sphinx, where they did th actual 3D mapping of the inside of the real pyramid and put it in the game so you could explore the pyramid. And, like, there are little notes about, like, what each of the rooms are and what's in them in real life and everything. There Obviously, there is a certain point in the pyramid where it's obviously fictional, 
But it's cool that all the real parts of it are there. Mm-hmm. Um, no, I love how immaculate the tombs are. Because death as a concept just fascinates me, so the idea of, like, this, there's this, like, epic, eternal monument to effectively, like, just Immortal, a great... Oh. Yeah, or the grave, or death, or the afterlife, just to see that, and it's, like, an old, mysterious thing that's... There's something alluring... Like, I want to visit the pyramids, basically, is what I'm saying. Just because it would be cool to visit, like, I, I like visiting tombs. They're, they always intrigue me. Hey, speaking of tombs, hey, Border, do you want to go to, a, um... I'm gonna fly to Kiev and let's go to Ukraine. Let's go to the exclusion zone and just like chill out for a day. Oh yeah, let's just play stalker IRL. That, that that'll go well. <laughs> I mean, if you follow the rules, you should be fine. They, you get a little certificate as well. Of they take your radiation reading when you go into Chernobyl, and then they take it again when you leave. And you get to does it say I gained this many fucking rads while in the Ukraine? You like well, it's. Sticker? It's not like a sticker or souvenir, but it is, you can technically keep it as a souvenir, because they let you keep the little document. I think it's written in Cyrillic, though. It's written in Ukrainian or Russian, I think. Um, but yeah, it says who you are, and what your radiation level is. And that you were approved or declined uh, the ability to leave or enter. Or something. Mm -hmm. uh, the only catch is if you want to vlog it. There's only one rule, apparently, and that is you are not allowed to film the military checkpoints. Uh, when you approach them. That's fair. Or when you're at them. And they're guarded by Russian military, so I don't want to try and do it secretly, either. <laughs> Guys that used to fucking run the KGB, yeah, probably not a good idea to try and uh, sneak up with a hidden camera. Probably. Yeah. Yeah, this is the second most powerful military on the planet. I'd rather not fuck with this. <laughs> Didn't they have come up with a nuke called like the Devil Two or something? No, the Satan. Oh, the Satan Two is like the horrifying to a degree that it gives me a boner. Wouldn't it? Like, isn't it supposed <laughs> to be? No, no, wait. One, one of them has a minim has a blast radius between the size of get ready or effective area of danger the size of France at its lowest setting and Texas at its highest. <laughs> Oh, yeah. oh, you're That is from a bomb. single bomb. Yep. Yeah, they made only one. This is Sitar Bomba, right? No, this is Satan. No, Zar Bomba wishes it could be that powerful. This is Satan 2. <laughs> oh, sh shit. Did you hear about the recent Russian nuclear. <laughs> Satan's so good. How the fuck. How come they ain't dropped Satan 2 yet? And now <laughs> they're Satan 2. Yeah, I was going to say it for real. Where's where's God to fucking that update needs to come the fuck out for balancing reasons because the thought that was Christianity. <laughs> this sounds I mean, well, like that's just Jesus, isn't it? This. Well, I I should also point out that we have a different nuke building philosophy than the Russians do. Um, the Russian nuke building philosophy is like it's almost like a shock and awe overkill, which is I why mean, the state two has a blast radius the size of Texas. Is, um, isn't that the whole point of a nuke to begin with, is shock well, and awe? Well, yeah, but here's here's a difference, though. The U.S.'s system of nukes, um, I think it's called, like, the Thor missile system, or maybe that was the old missile system, um, were, are meant to be, like, there's a shit ton of them, but they're all, like, pinpoint. We deliberately only cap them off at a certain point, as opposed to just making the biggest bomb we fucking can, because why not? Because there's a problem with making one overly powerful gotcha. bomb. Is that everyone at the United Nations? I was. The Soviet Union was actually low key embarrassed or a bit like <sighs> myth about the about the Tsar Bamba because instead of getting everyone afraid and praising them, they instead got a lot of shit for picking up so much uh, uh, fallout and other particles into the atmosphere for just a test that they thought it was just how to put this them being needlessly gung-ho over a point they didn't need to make and then causing a needless fallout for it. So, they were actually they actually were not keen on talking about it for a while because it was slightly an embarrassment because of how much ridicule they got for it. Uh, oh, Jesus I mean, Christ! No, that was Panda. Panda. That was Panda. <laughs> Um, trying to one up me, Fox. <laughs> but, uh, Dude, you you fucking belch so hard that it froze the game a little. 
Nice. <laughs> so I screamed it. while your game froze, and now it kind of like burps. This is like the greatest thing in history. Right. Oh my god. <laughs> Ellie is so lucky to have left early because holy shit, Biscuit. Uh, I can hear her glorious. yell from here. I can hear I her read so glorious. hard. <laughs> nice. That was cool. Oh, nice. Nice. <laughs> but yeah, uh, for to give you an idea, the U.S. missile system has meant that we've got like a shitload of these things. We can fire it anywhere in the world and... They're only the size of a city deliberately because that means we could fire off near as many as we want. And yeah, it will still damage the environment because it's a new, but it won't do like, it won't like grind up an entire country with all the soil and nature on it like a Satan 2 would. Instead, you're just pinpoint destroying massive cities. Which honestly, it seems kind of like the smarter play. Because, no, it like, is. Cause, Cause think about like this, if you're fighting, say, like, a worldwide terrorist organization, if you have one big bomb, you can make one statement in one place. And that place may be really fucking huge, but hey, guess what? They got places all the fuck over. You have a hundred smaller bombs, you can take out a hundred of their fucking places. Majorly populated or not. Right. No, like, what I find also nuts is that I love that the Cold War has this almost mythology to it. Because it really does. Like, you never really know what all the secret government groups have been doing, or what, how many other secret super weapons that we really had, or what, why the number stations are still running, and what it's telling whatever the fuck is listening to them, you know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but one of them that I like is that the US actually did build an unstoppable super weapon. Because if you used it today, we would be the only nation on Earth that could also stop it. Mm. I really do mean nope. we are the only one. We made a, and you, I've told you about this, we called it the Valkyrie, and it was designed to be a nuclear bomber in the 60s. Only what we found out, what we actually did was we made a plane that was so horrifyingly powerful that if unleashed, would we wouldn't be able to stop it. And hmm. the, the entire point of it was, it was designed to give the world its final bombing run. Hmm. Um, and, apparent, and I think it was like something like, if you wanted to destroy the world, you only needed three, but we built like ten. Hmm. All right, that's close enough. Um, and I think it was like, it only, you would only have needed one to have completely destroyed China or Russia. Hmm. Um, that still applies today, because as it turns out, it is still faster than a surface-to-air missile, because we thought surface-to-air missiles would catch up with it, but they never did. So technically, you will not be able to shoot it down with a missile today. Oh fuck! And this is a super weapon from 1967. Yeah, what kind of fucking speed this thing packing? Jesus Christ! Um, the only thing faster than it, by decimal points, is a Blackbird. In fact, it is so powerful at Mach speed, it even if you cut the power to the engines. Um, it can still generate lift from its own hypersonic shock waves. Oh yeah, one of my great uncles was uh, a, on the Skunk Works team that made the SR-71. That's cool, but for real. Damn it! You could, even if you somehow killed the engines on this thing, it can keep flying from sonic fucking shock waves. Damn. How long? is the question after you cut the power though because eventually well actually well yeah oh. how fucking long because air resistance is still a fucking thing how long it is can still it a thing like but you'd probably be good because it also has the service ceiling of the sr-71 damn it so you can not only fly outside of radar range you're probably higher than a missile can reach if one even can reach you you can literally just tap oh. the accelerator and it's not a problem anymore and even if you somehow lost power to the engines, which, by the way, would not happen in its use because we thought about that, um, even if you somehow cut all the power, you have 85,000 feet of drag and could probably land anywhere on the planet from anywhere at that height, probably. Mm -hmm. Especially if you're still riding on your sonic shockwave lift. 
Yeah, not from the oh, 80,000. There's not, there's not going to be a lot of air resistance because the air gets thinner the higher you go up. Fun fact. Yes. But yeah, no, so that's the story about how the U.S. built a horrifyingly unstoppable super weapon called Valkyrie. <laughs> and that wasn't even... Oh, that's not even the worst thing we did. We did design a weapon. We haven't built it yet, though. Damn it! But we found out we can do it. Hmm. And it technically doesn't violate the Geneva Convention, you know which what? is horrifying. Genetic it bombardment, I already know. Yep, Rods of God. Yeah, also known as Project Thor. Yep. Ah! And uh, also, I love the name. The technical name of the Rods of God is Tungsten Kinetic Missile. Which is... Which is actually kind of misleading because it's not really a missile at all. It uses pretty much nothing. The only the gravity. It, it has, literally uses gravity. The only thrust it has is to get it into its initial targeting position. After that, gravity does all of the work because it's yeah. literally just a big, heavy fucking rod made entirely out of tungsten. Yeah, yeah and, and then it kinetic energy. energy. Yes. From fucking being dropped from orbit to just slam down on shit. No I mean, explosives, ah, no chemicals, yeah, yeah. no nuclear components whatsoever. So technically, it does not violate the Geneva Conventions, but it is still a horrifyingly powerful super weapon. Ah, damn it! Yes, but here's the thing. Apparently, it, it technically, if it technically did, I forget what makes it count as a missile. Just it's, yeah, I think it's cool to call it a, tung a tungsten kinetic missile. There's something cool about that. Um, but what's cool no, is what's no. really cool is that you know the uh, Cascadia event, which is the earthquake that will send <clears throat> West Coast California Fuck. into the ocean. That you know the enough. um okay. Shit. Well, it would only apparently take one tungsten kinetic missile to split the San Andreas. No. Coast. Damn I believe it. it! It would also only take one to crush Ugh. a mountain too. Fuck. Like, completely flatten it. There is now a crater where Mount Everest used to be because America's Thor weapons said no. You don't I mean, have it anymore. Isn't it basically like a meteor? Well, essentially what we also wanted to do was we wanted to make sure that no matter how deep an enemy base was, we could blow a mountain-sized crater right through it. Oh yeah, this fucking base is uh, like fucking 500 meters underground and encased in concrete. Oh, that's that's really cute. It doesn't matter. Whosoever threatens America, for they are so unworthy, they shall face they shall face the power of Thor. <laughs> <laughs> you aren't an old man and a fool. I do like. That was one thing I liked about Call of Duty was uh, I liked that they called it the um, Odin Project Strike. Odin, yeah. Because that's also fitting. It's literally lo launching a, uh, something that looks like a lance, Damn it. and it's impossible to block and is guaranteed to kill you. Yep. Like, there are a lot of things I didn't like about Ghost, but I liked the fucking concept of, oh, yeah, they're, they're fighting over this orbital fucking super weapon that does, in theory, already fucking exist. Mmm. Spooky. Mm. 